Well, we start with a candid interview with Jack Grealish, who admits that he is yet to reach his best form since his move to Manchester City, but insists that he can handle the pressure and the criticism. Well, Grealish has been the subject of increasing scrutiny and only managed to score his first goal of the season on Saturday. He says he's ready to embrace his £100 million price tag, but believes Kevin De Bruyne may have a point when he claimed Grealish received unfair criticism because he's English. I feel like I deal with pressure well. I, I do feel like I can start playing a lot better. Um, I, I probably haven't been playing at the top of my game since since I've moved to City at the start of last season, but I think I've showed glimpses of it. Um, and, you know, over the next you know two months especially, I'm just going to try and get my head down as much as I can and, and work so hard and... and um, and hopefully, you know, good things will happen. Before I moved to City three, four years, um, I knew that I was going to play every game, every minute of every game. Um, and, you know, I was captain there. And like he says, you know, I was one of the first names on the team sheet uh, where, you know, you come to now a club like City who just, um, obviously this is no disrespect to the people that I was with at Villa, you know, it was a great, a brilliant club with, with very good players. Um, but, you know, when you come to City and you have the likes of Kevin, Phil, um, you know, I could go on and on. Uh, it's difficult, you know, we've even got a full-back at the moment in Jao Cancelo, who I reckon is one of the best wingers in the world. Um, so, yeah, it's obviously different. Uh, it's difficult at times, you know, because, you know, when I was at Villa, for example, I had that... Well, I just played every game, you know, you felt like you was in a rhythm. Um, but listen, you're going to get that, you know, um, when, you, when you're playing at a club, you know, with so, so many top players. And, um, you know, as long as we're training well and we're playing well, it's, it's all right. Kevin De Bruyne has, has been speaking about you and he says that you, he thinks you're unfairly targeted, as a lot of English players are. Um, he says because he thinks there's this English mentality of criticising their own so that if, if Italian players, for example, went out or, or for a night out, they wouldn't be treated in the same way as when English players are, are, are spotted out on a, a night out. Do you think he's right? I'll ask you, do you? Yeah. <laughs> I think he is right. Um, I don't know. I want to be friends with you all. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I can obviously see where he's coming from a little bit. Um, but, you know, when... I think that's just the way, you know, it is in this country. Um, you know, and especially if you myself uh, playing, you know, for one of the biggest clubs uh, in the world who are who are winning trophies, you know, every single year. And obviously, you know, when I have a prize tag on my head that I that I have, you know, people are gonna are gonna want to talk. So it's just something, you know, that I need to, you know, I keep going back to it, saying embracing it, and just it's just part and parcel, really. Um, but yeah, I do see where it's coming from a little bit. How is your relationship with? Pep Guardiola developed and, and what does he bring into your game now that you've worked under him for quite a period of time now? It's completely different to, to the way I was at Villa. I think at Villa I was more free. Um, you know, here it's more structured at City. Um, I have a great relationship with the manager. Um, you know, I've said in so many interviews, he's just... You know, I've never seen anything like it, the way he thinks and the way he look, uh, looks at football. Um, he's just obsessed with it and, you know, I think you can you can tell why um, and you can see why. Uh, but, no, I have a good relationship with him. Um, you know, I know people are saying that, like, I might be playing a bit different to the way I used to. Um, but I think that just comes with the players that I'm playing with as well. Um, you know, I play with so many top players, like I just touched on earlier. Um, and it was obviously going to change my game a little bit. I'm never going to be the exact same player that I was because I'm playing for a, a different club with a different team and, and a different manager. Um, but hopefully now this is the start of my season and I can just kick on from here. So Greel is saying that there's still room for improvement. We're going to compi compare his final year at Aston Villa in the Premier League to his time at Manchester City so far. Because there's not too many differences in the games played. Just three more for Manchester City in that time. You'd imagine a lot more from the bench for Man City than there was at Aston Villa. Uh, but more goals for Villa. Uh, two more than he got at Manchester City. Plenty more assists. Ten at Aston Villa and three at Manchester City. That's maybe the biggest surprise. But chances created again, 81 at Aston Villa, uh, far more than he did at Manchester City. More touches, well, in fact, the touches, uh, more touches in that time as well at Villa, despite the fact that at the time they were further down the table, of course, and more dribbles attempted as well.
Hmm. Well, thanks for that, Tom. I mean, so according to the statistics then... Statsman. Well, Statsman uh, Tom over there. Greenish <laughs> isn't hitting the heights he did at Villa, but should he be starting for England at the World Cup? We want to know. So let us know who you think should be starting in England's front line. We've given all of ours so far. The World Cup kicks off in less than two months. Well, I say that actually, Bella, just so you're shaking your head. We've given our three... Tom even I, did four, you'd give two. I provided two to balance things out because Tom provided four. But get involved on Twitter, <laughs> at Sky Sports News, and use the hashtag GMSF so that we can read them out as well until 10. Now, while Grealish accepted criticism about his own form, he's defended England manager Gareth Southgate, who's had his own critics, uh, especially after the poor start to the Nations League. And coming up next for them, it's Italy and Germany. There's certain games in, in your career where you just try and you know, brush it under the table. And I think that was one, obviously, we knew that it weren't a good enough performance and result from us. Um, but, yeah, obviously, we were into a, into a new camp now and, obviously, it's a new season for, for all of us. So, um, you know, we're only looking forward and we're looking forward to these next two games. The manager got quite a lot of stick from the fans after that game at full-time at Molyneux. Could, could you sort of believe that, given the progress that the team's made in the last five or six years under him? I think it was harsh. Um, you know, I think it was very harsh. You know, and especially the the World Cup and and the Euros of of how well the team done um, and the, and the manager himself. I thought it was obviously harsh, but yeah, I think you know, like what Rob said at the start, I think that's what sometimes you you get. You know, if you're English, and I've certainly had my fair share. I have a, I'm, I'm not just saying this. I have a great relationship with him. Um, you know, I think I've. I, I, I'm not too sure how many ga how many caps I've actually got now for England. Um, you know, and they've all been under him. Um, like you touched on, you know, that I've obviously come on a lot during the Euros as a sub. Um, but listen, I'd obviously love to play every game, but I'm here. You know, it's a it's a squad. It's um, a big squad with with top players all over. So if that's if that was my role, then then that's fine. Um, I'll just do whatever I can, you know, to, to try and help the team. If you have a few bad results, you know, people are going to, you know, even jump on the bandwagon a little bit. Um, listen, I think before that, you know, everyone was saying how good we are and how, you know, how well we'd been doing. Um, you know, we hadn't been beat, I think, over 90 minutes, was it, for so long. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't really say, you know, we're underdogs or anything. We just, we know what talent we have in, in our dressing room. Listen, everyone's, everyone's here, you know, trying to impress the manager and trying to get, get on that plane. And, um, and, yeah, it's going to be difficult because you have so many top players in this squad. I do like to think that I can play in a few positions, you know, whether that be as a number eight, a left winger. Obviously, I started one game at the Euros um, last year and I actually started that game as a number 10. Uh, I think it was it was Mason, wasn't it? Who had, who was, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I obviously started as a number ten that day, and you know I enjoyed it. I feel like I can play in a few positions, and I think, well, I hope so. Anyway, that's what the manager will look at, you know, going into a World Cup. Well, England's men will be hoping that they can end their 56-year wait for a win at a major tournament when they head to the World Cup this winter. Former England manager Fabio Capello believes a winter tournament will be a big advantage for the squad. And Jack Grealish, well, he shared his view on that. I don't want to put too much pressure on, on the team, um, but I generally do. You know, we have world-class players, you know, all over the pitch, playing for big clubs. Um, you know, we have a a great captain and a, and a, and a great striker. Um, so, yeah, you know, I think we've got a brilliant chance. I think it, it possibly could help, you know, that the that the tournament's um, during the season. Um, and, yeah, it's just something, you know, that we need to look forward to, take uh, each game as it comes. And, um, you know, it would be obviously an unbelievable feeling to even, even play in a World Cup um, uh, for myself personally. Um, but, yeah, as a team, you know, I do think we have a good chance. It's two months till the World Cup kicks off. It's crazy, isn't it? Someone said to me actually the other day that we, I think the England team meet up in, in eight weeks. I think it was yesterday. So I think it's something, you know, everyone uh, everyone in the country, you know, can be so excited for, um, you know, when you look at the the um, results of the last um, two competitions, the Euros and, and the World Cup in 2018, you know, they've been brilliant. So, you know, it's down to us now to try and um, go, go one further. And, you know, even when I've done press and stuff uh, at the Euros. One thing that I loved 
is you know the way the whole country did come together uh, for the World Cup and for the Euros, um, and hopefully you know we can do that again this year. If I could get a goal at a, a major tournament for England, it would be it would be unbelievable. One of the best moments of my life.